Hi, welcome to JLabs. I squared C or inter-integrated circuit is a multi-master, multi-slave, single-ended serial computer bus invented by Philips Semiconductor, now NXP Semiconductor. It is typically used for attaching lower speed peripheral ICs to processors and microcontrollers. Alternatively, I squared C is also spelled as IIC. Unlike UART or SPI communication, I squared C only requires two lines, namely SEL and SDA. And these same set of lines are also used to connect multiple devices of up to 128 for 7 bit addressing and up to 1024 devices for 10-bit addressing. SEL is for the clock signal, and the SDA is for the data signal. Both the SEL and SDA lines are open train drivers. What this means is that the chip can drive its output low, but it cannot drive it high. For the line to be able to go high, you must provide pull-up resistors to 5 volt supply. You only need one set of pull-up resistors for the whole I2C bus and not for each device. If the resistors are missing, the SCL and STI lines will always be low, nearly 0 volts, and the I2C bus will not work. Devices attached to the I2C bus are either master or slave. The master is always the device that drives the SCL clock line. The slaves are the devices that respond to the master. A slave cannot initiate a transfer or the I2C bus. Only a master can do that. Both master and slave can transfer data over the I2C bus, but that transfer is always controlled by the master. Communication via I2C is more complex than with UART or SPI solution. The signaling must adhere to a certain protocol for the devices on the bus to recognize it as a valid I2C communication. The first thing that will happen is that the master will send out a start sequence. This will alert all the slave devices on the bus that a transaction is started, and they should listen in case it is for them. Next, the master will send out the device address. The slave that matches to this address will continue with the transaction, while the others will ignore the rest of this transaction and wait for the next start sequence. Having addressed the slave device, the master must now send out the internal location or register address inside the slave that it wishes to write to or read from. The number is obviously dependent on what the slave actually is and how many internal registers it has. Having sent the I2C address and the internal register address, the master can now send the data byte or bytes. The master can continue to send data bytes to the slave and this will normally be placed in the succeeding registers because the slave will automatically increment the internal register address after each byte. When the master has finished writing all the data to the slave, it sends a stop sequence, which then completes the transaction. There you go, a very simplified explanation on the I2C protocol. If you want to see more videos like this or be notified with my upcoming videos, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. As always, thank you so much for watching.